Hey, Drew, Joseph Hoyt, Dallas Morning News. You know, last year you went really viral for all the mustache and everything like that, and then this tournament you went viral for a halftime speech. I guess how has the two NCAA tournaments been different for you? Is there a different feeling this year? Well, yeah, uh, having fans is awesome. It, uh, and we don't have to stay in one hotel for a whole month. So, uh, I mean, that obviously sucked last year. I mean, we were, we were fortunate enough to play, and it was great to play, obviously. But, like, compared to how it has been so far this year, it's night and day. I mean, just the fans being able to you know, interact more with people, not being confined to just a hotel, getting to kind of, you know, go back, go back home for a little bit and even just celebrate a little bit there. Like, it's awesome. It's just kind of what I envisioned March being like as a kid growing up. So it's kind of everything I thought it would be. Question from Bob. Hey guys, uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Uh, may maybe each guy could take it, maybe left to right, or I guess be right to left for y'all. But um, what, what are your impressions of Arkansas? Eric Musselman was just saying, I, everybody's talking about Gonzaga. Obviously, you guys are number one team. You played in the title game last year, and you know Arkansas is not, not getting much respect. Well, what do you guys think of Arkansas? They're a really good freaking team. Uh, they're in the uh, Sweet 16, and just to win a game in the NCAA tournament is just hard enough as is. But uh, they, they pose a huge challenge. They got uh, – they're a really good defensive team. They're in the gaps. They're, uh, they're good offensively as well. They have a nice combination of just athleticism, length, and then they have a, a stretch five is good as well. So uh, it's going to be a big challenge, and they're a really good team. And I don't think – I don't think they're being disrespected. I think they're a really good team, at least at least in our eyes. Yeah, I'd agree with everything Drew said. I think he hit it right on the nail. Uh, you know, they have they can put five great players on the court at any time with uh, you know a diff few different lineups. Uh, they can go big, they can go small, and uh, like Drew said, you know they're gonna have a good game plan for us, and you know we gotta be ready. Um, yeah, I think um, their team likes to. Pl push the page just like us. I think it'll be a, a good game for us to get up and down the floor. Um, they have a lot of athletes, um, play a high level defense, so we just got to be solid on both sides of the floor. Um, but I think this game is more about what we do. Go to the back middle next. Uh, Dane O'Neill at The Athletic. Drew, at the beginning of the season, Mark said a lot that he felt that the difference with this team compared to last year's was like the, the evolution was larger. There was more that you guys could become. Have you sensed that and seen that, especially in the last, I don't know, a couple of weeks with this team, that the, that the progress continues? Yeah, I think, uh, I think from just a team aspect, I think Andrew and I have grown a lot as leaders. I think it's something that, uh, took some time for us to figure out the best way to lead this team. And then you have guys like Chet who have really just really figured out like what it means to be a Zag. And also just, I think it, you see it in the way he plays, especially as of late. He's really just, he's hooping out there. He's not thinking as much. The game's coming natural to him. He's, he's making his own interpretations within the offense and defense, which is stuff that if you can't coach. It just takes time to get a proper feel for that. So I think just, the way we approach things and just kind of the mental growth we've had is really, really coming to fruition right now. Back middle. Hey there, this is Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal, and this is a question for you, Drew. Um, you starred in a series of ads for a Spokane or Spokane casino, and that's something that's kind of unimaginable um, given the previous NCAA rules around gambling. And I'm just curious when you, um, you know, accepted to do those ads, and when you were thinking about that. Um, did you think at all about the NCAA's, you know, long-time rules against sports gambling, or was that something, you know, in your mind at all? <laughs> um, well, every time I walk into the gym, I see their uh, a big Northern Quest logo, so I didn't think too much of it, <laughs> honestly. But uh, no, they're they're a great uh, partner I have. They're uh, they really they really are good with the community and everything, and they're really tied into a lot of things uh, in Spokane. So I just I really like that about them, and I think. They have a lot more than just gambling, so that's why I really like them. Back to Dana with a follow-up. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Chet, speaking to what Drew just said about you kind of hooping and not thinking, how did that kind of come about for you? Like, was there a moment or a time, or how did you kind of get to that point? And, and I, I guess, do you agree with his assessment? Uh, yeah, I'd say it wasn't like a single moment in time. I'd just say over time, over a course of games and practices, uh, you know, and then also, like they were saying, they were being great leaders. You know, they were helping me out, you know, every single day. And, you know, over time, uh, you know, I just kind of 
uh, got some, you know, confidence. And like he said, you know, it wasn't thinking, it wasn't, you know, being told do this or do that. It was just, you know, going out and hooping. Um, and, you know, it kind of shows, I guess. Up front in the middle. Chet, Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News. Um, you, through uh, mid-January to late February, were shooting at, at almost a 50% clip. It's not been quite as tight the last uh, five, six, seven games or so. Uh, is there something that maybe is a little bit off? Is it you're not getting as high quality of shots now as you were back then? Is there anything you could pinpoint as to why you, sh you were shooting so great now then and, and it's fallen off a little bit from three-point? Uh, yeah, uh, at the end of the day, you know, uh, it doesn't matter how great of a shooter you are, uh, you know, you're going to miss shots. Uh, and, you know, you just can't lose confidence. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I get in the gym every day and work on my shot so that, you know, next time I shoot that shot, you know, I know it's going in. And, you know, that's the mindset I have. And, you know, that's the mindset I'm going to have going into these next couple of games. And, uh, you know, it's going up for sure. Question over to the left. Jim Mahan from the Spokesman Review for Chet and Drew. Uh, you see good bigs in this tournament with Jalen uh, at Memphis, and now Arkansas has a guy that does it a little different too. He can block shots, but he takes a lot of charges. Uh, Chet, I know your uh, uh, assignment is usually locking down the lane. What do you make of that matchup and how he goes about it? Uh, maybe it's a little different than what you've seen. And same for you, Drew, that matchup. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's a great matchup, and you know, at the end of the day, it's all about making winning plays. And you know, whether it's blocking a shot or taking a charge, you know, at the end of the day, they're both winning winning plays. And you know, that's what he's going out there to do. So you know, we just have to you know be ready for it, expect it, you know, not be caught off guard by it, and uh, you know, play around it so that it doesn't you know negatively affect us. Yeah, he's a uh, a really skilled big, and he's smart. Uh, taking charges isn't fun. It kind of hurts, <laughs> and he's. I think he's one of the best in the whole country. So that's a. Uh, I mean, he really puts it on his, puts his body on the line for his team to win, and that's a really admirable trait I think that he has. And then on top of that, he can stretch the floor and drive and pass. So uh, it's going to be a fun challenge for sure. But uh, it's a tournament, so we're looking forward to it. Next question to the right. Uh, Travis Green, Crim Two News in Spokane. My question's uh, for Andrew. Uh, match up with J.D. Note in this one, a guy that can score, leads the team in points, and really creates a lot of havoc. He's 14th in the country in steals. Just what are your thoughts on the matchup with him? Um, I think he's a real aggressive player. I think we need to um, just make all of his shots tough tomorrow or, or the, the next day. And we just have to – it's a group, group, group uh, kind of commitment to guard him. Um, on defense, I think we just have to be solid with the ball. We played a lot of handsy defenders like that before, so um, nothing new um, in that case. Go to the middle for our next question. Hi, Josh Peter with USA Today for Drew and Andrew. In September, Coach Hugh took responsibility for a highly publicized mistake and said he was going to turn it into a positive. How has it affected you and the team this season? <laughs> um, has, I had no effect on me. N yeah. None at all. I mean, he's a grown man. He took care of his business. He owned up to it. He didn't hide from it. He did what he did, and we respected that. And, you know, he talked to us about it. He didn't. He was upfront and honest about it, and shit happens. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you mess up and you move on. Not really much you can do about that. Question from Janie on the left. Hi, guys. Janie McCulloch from Associated Press. Andrew, a couple of the, the Arkansas guys said that when they crossed over or got to half court today, they wanted to let it fly just to kind of feel what maybe it's like to be Stephen Curry on this court. Uh, any thoughts on, on maybe trying a few from, from the middle? Um, yeah, I, I, we, we always do half quarters, so um, I'm going to definitely shoot, try, my, try my luck with those. Um, hopefully we can get that Steph Curry luck in this gym, for sure. And any, any first impressions of the, excuse me, sorry, any first impressions of the building and the huge scoreboard, the biggest in the NBA? Um, I haven't gotten a chance to look at it yet. Are we just walking in? Question to the right. Brenna Green, Crumb 2, Chet. Um, I know that you are very close to breaking the Gonzaga blocks record, and I know that you take a lot of pride in your defense. Just what does it mean to you if you were to be able to be atop the Gonzaga record books in, in that category in particular? 
Uh, yeah, I don't really chase, you know, statistics or, you know, records or anything like that. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to help my team win. But, you know, blocks is definitely, uh, you know, a huge part of winning. Uh, it's definitely winning plays. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't say I, you know, chase blocks, but, you know, getting blocks is definitely something I take pride in. And, you know, if I could hold that record, uh, you know, it'd definitely be pretty special. We'll go to the middle here. Chuck Culpepper from the Washington Post. Andrew and Drew, how much did the Baylor game last April help, if any, with the Memphis game this March? Um, I think that uh, the way Baylor guarded us last year with their athleticism and their, and their uh, kind of no middle plan, I think it was it was definitely definitely prepared for a team like Memphis, just how much athletes they had, how much length they had, um, just to play in that type of environment in an NCAA game with the, the pressure high. Uh, I think that definitely prepared us for a game like that. And I think we're going to have another game kind of similar like that to Arkansas coming up. So um, definitely prepared us for the future. We've got time for a couple more questions. We're going to go over here to the right. Uh, Ty Richardson, ESPN, Arkansas. Andrew, when you were on Florida back in 2019, you played Nevada and Eric Musselman. Do you remember anything about that game and just kind of the style of that team? Um, yeah, um, I remember they had the Twins. They had an older roster. A lot, they played a lot of isolation ball. I think similar to some of the stuff that they do over there now. Um, give the ball to the best player. Let them let them hoop. Um, so I think it's gonna be a similar similar task for us um, as that game. Question up here to the right. Colton Clark, Spokesman Review. Uh, obviously, Spokane kind of crossing their fingers this year. At, any of y'all superstitious or your teammates superstitious or do you guys not believe in that stuff? Do you have any kind of routine you follow throughout the season or this postseason run? Is that for all three, is that for all three of us? Please. Uh, I don't think I've heard of any like superstitious uh, activities from any of our teammates, like anything like that, but uh, you know, we have like a game day routine within, you know, the team, whether it's, you know, shoot around when team meals are, stuff like that. Um, uh, but outside of that, you know, I just try to, you know, uh, put my preparation in and, you know, live by that instead of, you know, living by superstitious stuff. I would say the only thing is to uh, <clears throat> play your ass off. So if that's a superstition, then there's one for you. No superstitions for me either. Final question to the left here. Uh, Jim from the Spokesman Review for Chet. Uh, you had the viral move uh, move on Steph Curry years ago. Uh, how much did that blow up for you personally with your social media or what have you? And any contact since with Steph? Uh, yeah, it blew up uh, quite a bit on social media and you know within a few different news outlets. Uh, haven't spoke. Uh, with Steph um, since uh, the the event, but you know he's a really good guy. Obviously a great player, um, you know. So all respect to him. But yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll have Coach Few up in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. We'll get started with Coach Few. Um, Coach, if you could give an opening statement, and then we'll turn it over to the floor for questions. Well, it's awesome to uh, be back uh, at a Sweet 16, and uh, we're excited to uh, uh, get out there on the floor. We know uh, we're going to have our work cut out for us with a uh, really, really solid and, and uh, tough-minded uh, Arkansas team. but. Uh, that being said, it's it. We we also are are uh, just feel great about being able to do this seven seven times in a row. We're not just taking that for granted, and we've definitely enjoyed uh, uh, every part of it and every aspect of it. And I think the guys have done a great job with that. Questions? As a reminder, please state your name and affiliation. We'll go to Ron first. Mark, Ron Kreischick from the San Francisco Chronicle. Um, curious what your team learned or what you learned about your team in the wake of the St. Mary's game here in the Bay Area. You've obviously, I think, won 21 of 22 uh, be, coming into this week's event. What, <clears throat> what did that sort of tell you about your team, how they responded to that? 
I mean, it, that they're champions, and, and they, they have a, a, a winning way about them. And, uh, you know, that we, we had the luxury or the, the – I don't know if they'd look at it as a luxury. We had the opportunity to have a, a week after that game. And I, I think we were able to kind of reset and, and just reconfirm about what we do and how we do it. And, uh, but that being said, I think we already knew that, how good St. Mary's was and how tough they were and how well schooled and well coached and, uh, uh, they were. And, and uh, um, so it was kind of a combination of, of those two things. Question to the right. Uh, Theo Lawson with the Spokesman Review. Um, Arkansas has three pretty, uh, pretty experienced, uh, talented guards in their backcourt. Uh, backcourt similar to you guys. You guys have some some transfers in, in the backcourt. So, so what's kind of the key to uh, to limiting their damage, and what do they do best? Gosh, they're great at uh, uh, in the open floor, uh, pushing it and, and and making plays. And then uh, I want to say they definitely in the upper percentile, maybe even the. The, the best in the country at drawing fouls and getting themselves to the free throw line. So uh, they, they do a great job of putting the ball on the floor and, and, and coming at you. Uh, and so we're, we're going to have to, you know, sprint back and build a wall and, and, and hopefully show that we have our hands back, but also, you know, rim protect and rotate uh, uh, out of those things. And then at, on the flip side at the other end, they're, they're really, really good at pressuring the ball and, and, and getting up into you, so we'll have to deal with that also. Question from Dana in the middle. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Mark, Drew just said that um, what he's noticed about Chet's evolution is he's thinking less and just, quote, hooping. Um, have you noticed sort of that transition, too, where he's sort of found his confidence and comfort level with all of this? Yeah, there's been some really, really great development with Chet over the, uh, the course of this year. You know, I think... Uh, there's a lot of things you can do at the high school level and even in the summers in the AAU that you just you're not able to get away with at this level because of the the talent the size and probably uh, in Chet's what he's been facing the physicality and the strength of the guys he's going against as well as the schemes of people in the lane so a lot of times when you put the ball on the deck there's not as much uh, uh, space uh, but he's done a wonderful, wonderful job of adjusting to that. I mean, I, I know I've kind of spoke to this uh, ad nauseum, but he's just such a he, – he wants to learn. He wants to develop. He's just – he's always around 20 hours a day and asking and, and wanting to watch film, to talk hoops, to, to, to lift, uh, to everything. And uh, – so, so open to coaching, and I think, uh, I think that's been a huge key, and it'll, it'll always be huge for him because there's so much development uh, in front of him. Question on the left? Yeah, Mark. Uh, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat. Is that, you know, Ch Chad and Drew, most people don't have one big as good as those guys. You have two. How big an advantage is that, do you think, for you all? And what do you think of Jalen Williams for Arkansas? Well, first, Jalen Williams is a great player, really, really versatile. Um, I've just been impressed with just, uh, you know, how well and how comfortable he is facing up and, and uh, um, you know, he's kind of that entity. I mean, maybe his numbers aren't off the charts, but he's scary enough. you got to guard him out there on the three line, but he's got a great lift fake and can put it on the deck and, and make plays. Uh, and then... You know, his rim protection is different than Chet's. He takes a lot of charges or attempts to take a lot of charges, so uh, we have to be aware of that. You know, the, the thing with R2 is they're just so vastly different. I mean, they're Chet, Chet can really space the floor and stretch you uh, on the offensive end. Uh, obviously, Drew is so adept uh, um, driving and moving and doing what Drew does, uh, you know, mostly around the paint. Um, I would say this, it's a nice luxury, though, to have to, you know, we're comfortable enough, as we've always been, going all the way back to Kelly Olenek and Rui and Brandon Clark and, um, you know, players like that, to be able to take those guys, take it off the glass and lead a fast break. Both Drew and uh, Chet are, are, are very good at that and kind of help us in the course of a game get a different 
look. Question in the middle. Yes, Mark. Uh, Chet, uh, early, late January to late Febru uh, February, really started to hit his stride as a three-point shooter. Last six, seven games or so, he's not been as accurate. Are you noticing anything with his shots? Are they not as high-quality shots? Is he uh, rushing? Is there anything in particular that, that, that binds that, uh, what, uh, that struggle together? Uh, I mean, I, I don't think so, Mike. I, I think it's just, you know, he shoots a lot of them. He definitely reps it out outside of practice. Look, I think guys are very, very aware of him because he was shooting the ball so well. So it's probably harder to get um, those wide open looks. Uh, but for the most part, if you go back through all of them, most of them have been really, really good shots and shots we want him to take. So, Go to the back left with a question. Um, Dennis Patchen from KHQ TV SWX. Mark, we talk about Chet, we talk about Drew a lot, but what Rashir and Andrew have done since the WCC tournament, can you talk about what those guys have been able to do over the last couple weeks? No, that's a great call. Uh, and it hasn't just been the last couple weeks, it's been all year, right? I mean, uh, you know, Andrew's just had a phenomenal uh, year. I mean, go all the way back to remember the. UCLA game in Vegas, just uh, what he was able to do, and, and uh, uh, he's just a, uh, it's, it's just a very, very comforting feeling to have Andrew Nembhard as your point guard, you know, in game, out of game, night before games, uh, things like that, because you know, by and large, he's going to make the right basketball play, and the other thing that I think is uh, lost with him, he's arguably our best perimeter defender uh, with his size and his, his strength and his experience. Uh, and then uh, Razier, man, I give him just so much credit for how easily he's assimilated with this group. And, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's very quiet and unassuming, but, you know, when anybody who's followed us this year and, when, you know, when, we've, when there's been challenging moments or challenging stretches in a lot of these games, Andrew's been the one that stepped up and, and made big plays. And, Four big shots. Over to the middle. Or I'm sorry, Razier. Razier, he made big plays, big shots down the stretch of a lot of our games. Uh, Alex Crescenti, yeah, KXOY TV. Uh, Coach, Andrew played all 40 minutes last week against Memphis mm -hmm. there. Um, is that something that you would like to get him a break if you have to, or does he have the ability to go out there and do that again? He definitely got the ability, and he's, we've played him a lot. We've played him a lot of minutes, and a lot of it's based on – you know, uh, foul trouble and things like that. I think the thing that everybody needs to understand these in the NCAA, these timeouts are three minutes long. <laughs> so they're the idea of giving a guy a blow. I mean, you you know, you take a nap. <laughs> you know, some of these deals. So it's different. It's just very different. There was a time uh, in the Memphis game where Drew pulled on his jersey as he came to the bench and. And I'm like, you need a blow? I mean, we got three minutes. And he's like, no, yeah, yeah, no, I'm fine. So, I mean, you know, these are, these are different how this is. Time, or half times are longer, everything, so. Question on the right. Hi, Coach. Travis Green, Crib 2 News. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on facing J.D. Note in this game. Yeah, a handful. Man, a handful more. Watched a bunch of him uh, more or more clips yesterday, just how adept he is at uh, just little tiny slots to be able to get in the lane and, and uh, um, so good in transition, um, plays with a lot of freedom, so it's hard. I mean, he can pull the three on you or he can lift fake and drive and, and get a crease and get downhill. Uh, great at getting to the line, like we talked about a little earlier. Um, so a handful. Those guys are, are hard, and he's he's on quite a quite a roll. So uh, we'll have to guard him as a group. Take three more questions up here on the right. Brenna Green, Crumb Two, uh, Mark. I was curious. Uh, you are a Zag dad. You have your son <laughs> on the team. Have yes. you acquired one of those shirts? And generally, just what do you think about the dads? Uh, it says about the dads that they put that together and the community that, that you've surrounded your team with? Yeah, actually one of those shirts ended up in my uh, t-shirt pile the other day. I asked Marcy about it, so she set me straight on it. Yeah, pretty cool. Uh, it's great. 
It's always great, at least with us, to see throughout the year how, you know, I'm concerned with how my team's built and how they all get along with all the new faces, but it's great when uh, we've had just some unbelievable team chemistry with our parents and stuff over the years and how close they become traveling around and, and, and really build lifelong friendships. I mean, I've seen the, uh, how connected the Tillys were from France with many of the people in Spokane and all that. And, and this group is uh, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I was even rocking my uh, Zag Dad shirt the other day when I was working out. What Proudly. We'll go to the back right for a question. Uh, Keith Ozokia, okay, XOY. Coach, this week must have flown by, considering last year you are playing Scrabble for nine days between <laughs> yes. games. Um, yes. Even though you've been through this so much, seven straight years did it. Not only week. Scrabble, but I had Drew next door to me with his Xbox till one in the morning every <laughs> night. So, uh, yeah, that was a factor last year also. The Xbox yeah, factor. I was 30 gonna... days, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> till one in the morning. Even though you've been through this, this is your seventh straight year here, these times between the rounds, is there a part of you and your staff that maybe have to, to hold the guys back? Are they just itching because of the excitement of this tournament? Uh, you know, I, I, the, there's a good mix, obviously, with Drew and Andrew being through this a bunch. Uh, you know, but it, it is new, and, and it's totally different experience for, you know, almost the rest of my crew. Uh, but you're right, it just, it kind of, this one seems like it really rolled in and happened really, really fast. I mean, we got home for it really, really late uh, Saturday night, so I think everybody just kind of slept uh, and, and rested Sunday. And then Monday, we, we had a really good practice and got after it really hard. And then, uh, man, Tuesday, we're on the road again. So uh, um, I think they're kind of used to it by now and, and uh, you know, understand you know, what's at stake and what's going on and how to, how to prepare through all of this. Final question in the middle here. Yes, Mark. Mike DeCourcy from Sporting News. Uh, Chet's such an uncommon player, almost yeah. unique. So when you got him into your camp, were the things you had to adjust? I mean, you've always adjusted to your talent, but never had to maybe incorporate someone as uncommon as him. No, that's a great call we were just talking uh, earlier about this like I think the the issue or, or whatever what happens is you know you see the number one prospect or two or three or four or whatever and then the expectation is they're just going to come in from the jump and and dominate or whatever and and, and it's that's just not how it goes especially when you're a high level team like us or you're playing you know against other experienced uh, high-level uh, teams, and and I think it's it's been exacerbated with Chet because, uh, and I just got asked about this earlier. You know, are you concerned about his scoring? And it's like, it, it took me a while, the first week, two weeks, month, to just to really truly understand. It, his game's not about scoring. He he impacts the game um, in so many ways that, I mean, it's almost, you could probably make an argument he impacts the game more on the defensive end than he does on the offensive end. And I think especially the way these games are being officiated and called and how, how you know, college basketball has kind of morphed into this. It's, we're, it's pretty rugby-like in a lot of instances off the ball or on the ball, what you're allowed to do. And so, I mean, that's been hard. You get guys that are outweighing by 50 pounds or, you know, are physical. And so it's, sometimes it's hard to truly manifest all that skill that's in there. But at the same time, I mean, he still gives you the ability to stretch the floor. Um, he's very adept when we, when we are able to find him around the rim. Like I said, he can take the ball off the glass and lead a break. And then all the while, he's given us an entity we haven't had on the defensive end. We've never used drop coverage like, you know, you see so many people doing in the NBA, but we've been able to um, to do that with Chet pretty uh, exclusively. And, and, and then, like, I think most people know me, I'm, um, I'd say I'm probably between ankle and shin deep in this whole analytics uh, stuff. But uh, I'm, my staff and my eldest son's kind of, helping me with all that stuff. And I mean, his 
points per possession is efficiency and all that is is off the charts. I think it's probably the highest in college basketball. So I think that kind of lends itself too to like it's not just all about him scoring or a shooting percentage or any of that. He just he's got an impact on the game that it's hard to measure sometimes. Like maybe that maybe they don't even post up because he's in there, you know, or they drive in and most last year they would have shot a layup on us. They hockey it and have to kick out or something. So it's hard to maybe track that with the traditional statistics. Thanks, Coach. Yep. All right. Thanks.